Well, joining us on this edition of the News Review, we have Director of Center for Counter-Hegemonic Studies, Mr. Tim Anderson, who's joining us from Sydney. Also, we have uh, historian and author, Mr. Marcus Papadopoulos, who's with us from the British capital, London. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Let's start off with uh, Tim Anderson. Uh, uh, first of all, Mr. Anderson, give us your perspective on uh, the uh, developments and how the situation is unfolding. The Taliban seem to be um, uh, and advancing in an accelerated and worrying rate right now. Yes, it does seem to be a rout, uh, particularly because of the consolidation of their gains in the north which of course is not their traditional territory. So it looks more likely that these defections um, are going to continue. One of the ministers has, has defected, has left the country also. It looks like uh, we're going to see a collapse of the, uh, the government that was set up under the occupation. Mr. Papadopoulos, give us your thoughts on the issue. Do you agree with Mr. Anderson and also how worrying and alarming uh, is the Taliban advance? Well, I believe it's important, first of all, to say that Afghanistan is quite simply a country that is impossible to govern. And that is largely on account of how there is no such thing as an Afghan race. Furthermore, it is also important to note that Britain's creation of Afghanistan's modern day borders in the late 19th century, what is known as the Durand Line, has been a source of considerable instability and tension in Afghanistan and the wider region ever since. Now turning to the present day, the fact that the Taliban, Taliban is rapidly advancing on all fronts in Afghanistan will serve as a source of major consternation for both Iran and Russia. And indeed, regarding the latter, the Kremlin has uh, taken the decision to increase its military presence in Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan in terms of soldiery and weaponry. And also the Kremlin is overseeing joint Russian-Uzbek maneuvers along the uh, Uzbek-Afghan border. So Russia is very alarmed by how the Taliban is advancing on all fronts. And it certainly appears to be the case at the moment that the Taliban will replicate its victory in 1996 in today's Afghanistan in 2021. Now, we have to look at the NATO-led intervention in Afghanistan in 2001. And yes, it does seem that the NATO-led intervention has been an abject failure, but we cannot rule out the possibility that both America and Britain have, a, have come to some sort of arrangement with the Taliban to ensure that America and Britain retain influence in Afghanistan. I find it almost inconceivable to believe that America and Britain will have no influence whatsoever in Afghanistan when Afghanistan is of immense geostrategic importance. So I do believe that it is possible, and I emphasize the word possible, that Afghanistan could be run along the lines that Britain and America want it to be via Pakistan. Because as we know, Pakistan essentially created the Taliban during the Afghan civil war from 1992 to 1996. And we know that in recent years, the Americans and the British have been talking with Taliban representatives, with Taliban leaders to ensure that ISIS does not enter Afghanistan. Right. Uh, Mr. Anderson, uh, some in interesting points Mr. Papadopoulos just brought up. One about uh, the uh, uh, U.S.-led occupation of Afghanistan for over two decades, uh, essentially uh, believing uh, in Mr. Papadopoulos' words it was a total failure. What did that occupation and years of U.S. presence in Afghanistan achieve? It brought incredible suffering and death to the Afghan people and, and uh, abject failure at the end. I, I don't really believe they're going to be left with any uh, 
real role in the region because the Taliban has matured without changing its ideology um, in the sense that for several years now they've been mending their relationships with Iran and building their relationships with China. And it's true that, of course, Russia is concerned about the possible hosting of terrorism there, but let's remember that the Taliban itself has been fighting ISIS, which was implanted there by the US and the Saudis, basically, particularly with a view to trying to destabilise Iran. So I think the new relationships that the Taliban, the, the, the current Taliban, as opposed to the one 20 years ago, is, is building, including, even if it's tokenistic, um, representatives from Tajik and from Hazaras and so on, it may be token, but it's something that says something about their diplomatic manoeuvres and their positioning now with Iran, and uh, they're ready to take advantage of the relationship with China through that narrow, narrow cor corridor in the northeast there. So I think um, I doubt that the, the, the US and the British are going to have much say in this by the time they withdraw. Okay, uh, Mr. Papadopoulos, uh, you mentioned that uh, maybe uh, perhaps the United States and Britain will be trying to uh, establish and maintain some form of influence uh, via the Taliban, there is also another perspective of all of this that what's happening right now with the, the Taliban uh, gains and advancements being made across Afghanistan that the United States down the line will see this as an opportunity and another pretext for them to re-enter Afghanistan and, uh, and uh, basically uh, uh, reoccupy Afghanistan with, uh, with their forces and, uh, and their allies. Well, of course, only time will tell, but I still uh, stand by my observation, which I made moments ago, that I believe it is inconceivable that both America and Britain will not have any influence in Afghanistan whatsoever. After all, for Washington and London to have influence to exert control in a country does not mean that the British and the Americans have to have a military presence there. On the contrary, uh, if we take Iraq, for example, yes, there is a heavy American military presence in Iraq, but America's hold over Iraq is more than just a military one. For instance, the civil service is controlled in Iraq by America. And I believe that uh, Afghanistan, if it does come to be ruled by, by the Taliban once again, Afghanistan will serve as a very important uh, base upon which the Americans and the British could use to destabilize China. Why? Because the Americans and the British have in recent years began to facilitate the arrival in the most western region of China, Xinjiang, as a way of attempting to destabilize the Chinese government's jurisdiction over this very restless province. And if Afghanistan does come to be conquered by the Taliban, and if there is an informal arrangement between Washington and London and the Taliban, then I believe that the Xinjiang province will, come to become, will eventually become all the more restless in regards uh, to the Chinese government's ability to suppress uh, extremism and terrorism there and to ensure that the Xinjiang province remains uh, firmly within um, China. All right, thanks a lot, gentlemen. Tim Anderson joining us from Sydney. Also, thanks to Marcus Papadopoulos speaking to us from the British capital, London. With that, it brings us to an end here on this edition of the News Review. But do stay tuned. There's plenty more to come here on Press TV.